when a fighter loses, it hurts. Tyson Fury's a proud man, and it's all about legacies and egos. And he'll want to reverse that loss. Pro boxing fans here in London, Mayfair, with none other than Spence Oliver. It's been a minute, mate, because you're, you're too busy you're doing work for about 20 different companies. How are you? How's things? I'm, I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Let's talk about why we're here quickly. Uh, GBM announcing their partnership, their deal with The Zone as their broadcaster. Just talk to me how big a deal this is for GBM. Yeah, it's huge for him. You know, they've, uh, they're a company that's not been going too long. You know, they've been going a couple of years and they've made great strides. You know, um, it's good. They've evolved really, really well. I mean, I've known Izzy now for a, for a few years anyway and he asked me to come and do one of his first events. I saw the vision and I thought I saw the production and thought, you know what, this guy's, you know, I like what he's doing here. Put him in touch with Talk Sport. He done a deal with Talk Sport, a multi-fight deal with Talk Sport, and that gave him the platform to show people what he was doing. And now he's got this deal with his own. So I'm really pleased with him. Like ex fighter, you know, come away, got into promoting by mistake. Really, he wasn't meant. To, like it wasn't something that he sort of dreamt about doing. And um, yeah, he's turned it into what he has now. So really pleased for him, mate. I'm, I'm pleased that you know he's got the opportunity. Do you think Izzy will see it differently to other promoters because he stepped in the ring or do you feel like the business side is the business side, it's just, if you've got it, you've got it? No, I think the business side is the business side, it's about the vision. Okay. We live in a world of entertainment now, things have changed slightly. You know, YouTube boxing played its part in it, you know, big part in that with bringing a different audience. And I think with Izzy, I think what it is is um, recognising that there is a younger audience there and you know trying to capture that younger audience as well as the you know your hardcore boxing fans and trying to make it more of a more of a show more of a, more of an event you know and obviously boxing being the umbrella of it all but you know so, you know doing that and i think that that's that's is his sort of um vision is to do it so that it's a little bit more than just a boxing show it makes it you know a night out you know where your where your missus wants to come or where you, you know, your kids want to go. Like, do you know what I mean? Having that vision where you go, it's a great night out, and it's boxing as well. Um, so yeah, I think he, I think he succeeded in that. Uh, I think he understands. He's captured. You know, he's got a lot of people talking. He's a big character. I think that's always good in the game as well. So yeah, look, I see him blowing smoke up his ass all day. But do you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is that yeah, I I, I respect what he's done uh, in in the game so far, and good luck to him with his new journey. Do you want to quickly talk about boxing before you head off? Anthony Joshua, Daniel Dubois, seems like a fact that going to get made for September 21st at yeah. Wembley Stadium. What do you make of that? Do you think? Did you ever think that Dubois would get to a point where we'd be seeing a Dubois Joshua fight? Uh, no. No? no. Listen, I think that you know he's earned his stripes. That's for sure. But you know, you go back a few fights and you go, where is Daniel Dubois actually going? Like you know, when you go to the Joe Joyce fight, the first defeat that he had in his career, you just go, whoa, you know. It's, I'm not sure where it is, where is his level, is it like sort of British, is it European, then he went back, he rebuilt, come back, teamed up with Don Charles, Alexander Usyk was the first fight they had together, and he put up a credible performance, alright, he come away, he lost that fight, but it was only a short space of time that he was with Don, he went back to the gym, they rebuilt, and they worked on stuff, Don never what really worked on the physicalities, yeah, I mean, obviously they're working on a little bit of technical stuff, and more on the um, psychological side, as opposed to the phys physicality side, physical side. And I think that showed there, you know, going into that fight with um, uh, like the last fight with uh, Philip Hergovic, going into that fight, I think we saw what Donald uh, implemented into his style, and that was here, you know, that self-belief, because I think that was missing in his game, you know, he's always had the physical attributes, but not the self-belief, and I think that's a huge part of the game, and so him and Don, a match made in heaven, and a well-deserved victory against Hergovic, he stole his soul in many ways, to slowly, systematically bash him up. And he's earned the right now to fight Anthony Joshua. I hope the IBF do the right thing and that we've had the undisputed. And this is the roadmap, this is the way that I see it. People go, yeah, we want to see the undisputed again in the, in the rematch. Well, I sort of don't. I think, I think the undisputed has, has happened. The IBF should do the right thing now and, and strip him of the title or he, va he vacates the title, allow someone else to box for it. We get Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois. This is the, way, this is the vision that I think they've got. We got Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois, September the 21st at Wembley Stadium. Joshua will start a big favourite in that one with his experience and his background. Anthony Joshua wins that fight. Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk go again December 21st. Tyson Fury wins that fight. Now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 
We get Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury for the Undisputed in May. That's the roadmap. What do you make of all these uh, sparring stories resurfacing? I spoke to Daniel six years ago about this, and six years later, yeah. the same stories are coming back out again. Do you see much into that, or is it just part of the game? Part of the game. You know, sparring, sparring, stories and stories. You hear this, you hear that. You know stuff, you don't know stuff. But, you know, it's, um, it's part of the game, mate. Sparring's totally different to when they actually get in the ring and, 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 they, and they fight. It's a different game, man. You know, and trust me on that, I know that firsthand. So, you know, Derek Dizor was a great example of watching Derek in the gym and he never sparred well in the gym. But he would deliver on the day, you know, in his day, he would deliver, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, Derek was one of those guys and that's what, you know, some fighters are like that. Um, yeah, don't read too much into the stories. A uh, quick two from myself, Tyson Fury. Um, your mate, Johnny Nelson, uh, done interviews and he said, listen, I'm not sure if he's got the appetite for the rematch. Do you feel like mentally it's going to be a, a task for Tyson Fury to get back for this rematch? Well, it might be, it, it might relight his fire in many ways, you know, because he's got that taste of defeat now. Sometimes that relights the fire in the belly. And at this stage of his career, perhaps that's what Tyson Fury needed. You know, perhaps he needed that defeat to get himself back up for it again and get that appetite and that hunger back. So I know he says, yeah, I've always had that hunger and the undisputed and I'm chasing that. But when a fighter loses, it hurts. Tyson Fury is a proud man and it's all about legacies and egos. And he'll want to reverse that loss against Alexander Usyk. And he can do that, by the way. I think he has the, you know, he has the boxing IQs to do that. He has the, the physicality to do it. He has the, the, the boxing brain to do it. Like, he, he can do it. Um, and I just hope that he does, because it is about modern eras and legacies and for Tyson Fury to go down as one of the greats of this modern era or all time, he has to avenge that loss, or at least try to anyway, so let's hope that happens. Deontay Wilder, do you feel like with Deontay Wilder, the, that trilogy with Tyson Fury was, was the catalyst to his downfall? And do you also believe that that's taken a lot of Tyson as well? Oh, absolutely. You can tell that it's taken out of both of them. You know, Tyson's not the, fight, the same fighter, so you, you know, he's had to adapt. You know, his style was adapted now. You go back to 2015 when he boxed Klitschko out in Germany. You saw him, Fury was moving around, light on his feet and everything else. But as he's got older and he's had those hard fights and that wear and tear, he's had that adaptability where he's got to hold his feet more, you know, use the shoulder roll a little bit more, put it, let the, the, the hands go a lot more. So, um, yeah, it's a different Tyson Fury for sure. But that trilogy took a lot out of both of them, but more so Deontay Wilder. Final one, uh, Manny Pacquiao making a return at 45 years old against Mar uh, Mario Barrios for the WBC welterweight title. What do you make of that? Well, I'm just, I think it makes a little bit of a mockery of the WBC, you know, just by sanctioning that. The last time he boxed was against Ugas back in 21. It was Ugas in 21, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the last time he boxed. He lost. He looks a shell of his former self. He's out of the ring for three or four years. And then the WBC sanctioned him to fight against Barrios for the for the vacant title. I think it's, uh, it makes a it makes a mess of their system of their ranking system. I think it's a poor move from the WBC. On what basis? Oh, he's been a great champion in the past. Come on, uh, that's, listen, listen. You, it's, it's about other people having their opportunities as well. You can't just jump the queue. He hasn't warranted, he hasn't earned the right to be there. What? Because he's an eight-weight world champion. You go, well, that's great. You've cemented your legacy and you've done everything you've done, but can't just jump the queue because you're Manny Pacquiao. There's a system here, mate, or he's there with the WBC. Wicked. Spencer, I know you need to go. I know it's rush hour, so you've got to get back rush quick. Rush hour, man. I've got little Romario in the back there hovering around, <laughs> waiting to go, mate. I can see him give me the eyeballs, man. So back to the Talksport building. So, man, thank you very much yeah, well, for talking to Pro Box fans.